All right, gonna do another video showing, once again, the Talmudic Jewish lobby proving themselves to be the enemies of free speech that they are. In this case, you have a Talmudic Jewish lobbyist actually bragging about essentially ruining somebody's life, getting them fired from their job uh, for being a critic of Judaism, essentially. Because you see, uh, these guys can't stand debate and, and uh, critiques and criticism of their false religion, and they can't stand anything that's critical of what they do. You know, that's why I've said for a long time now, and I'll keep exposing this fact that the Talmudic Jewish lobby poses a much bigger threat to freedom of speech than any kind of Muslim terrorist, you know, group or whatever, thing like that. Because these guys will essentially pressure, you know, people into submission instead of just pointing a gun at them. Flat simple. And in many ways, their kind of legal pressure they put on and just their societal pressure is enough to silence free speech. That's why these guys are a bigger enemy than any kind of Muslim terrorist group. But it says here on the, the, uh, Jewish, the uh, Jewish Chronicle, I do apologize for that, says, time for direct action on social media. Let's see what he says. See how this, this uh, Talmudic Jewish lobbyist brags about getting someone fired from their job for essentially saying, some, saying stuff he didn't like. It says, uh, but this column is not a moan. It has a happy ending. Well, happy is not quite the word because I'm not here to tell you that you can take things into your own hands with a bit of persistence, show the anti-Semites that their actions can have consequences. Uh, free speech, there are no consequences, okay? Free speech is part of living in a free society. Oh, there's consequences to, to anti semitism And when they say anti-Semitism, they're referring to just criticizing their false religion in many ways. That's the thing, or criticizing stuff they do, or criticizing anything that Israel does apparently. See, part of living in a free society is you got free speech. There are no consequences. I mean, that, that's not that's not living in a free society. That's not living in a so-called democracy, as they would call it. But continuing on, a few weeks ago, I came across a tweet by Real Mes Mes Maestio, whatever they say, isn't it? Ray, Ray, Real Mysterio, whatever. I think that's how you say it. Uh, this charmer told his followers that I was a quote lifelong hard right racist. I had a look at his Twitter biography and was intri uh, intrigued to see he is a conductor and the founder of the Bristol Classical Players. Tom was born in 1980 and read uh, English at Jesus College, Oxford. Uh, he reads his bio on the uh, BCP site. I searched his name mainly because I'm a classical music enthusiast and wanted to see what sort of conductor tells lies about me online. What emerged immediately was a link to his day job, uh, director of private client tax services for Smith and Williamson. Williamson, I think as I say it, the blue blood firm, the blue blood firm that declares that for over a century we have managed the financial affairs of private clients and their business interests. This is no ordinary schmeal, I realized. But then again, it's free speech. You don't like it, just you can go to Israel then. You know? Free speech, see, again, uh, hard right. Well, if he really was so-called right-wing, he would understand that freedom of speech is part of living in a free society. But you see, it's only, see, the, the thing about the Talmudic Jewish lobby, I'll be covering this in another video, free speech is only, they only invoke it when it's speech they agree with. When it's speech they don't agree with, they start acting like full-on liberals and trying to call for cancel culture. But it says here, so it would be worth a look at his timeline to see what else he had to say. What I found was a man with what, what with what might best be described as an obsession with Jews, with Jewish communal bodies, and with denying the existence of labor anti-Semitism. For example, he has repeatedly tweeted about the board of deputies, uh, Star Starmer, Starmer, whatever, is going to do exactly as the BOD, the hard right, uh, fanatically pro-Israel group, tells him. This means the moment he says anything progressive or egalitarian they don't like, be it on Palestine, Muslims, or whatever, they'll attack him. You fight liars, not appease them. That's kind of the ironic thing, too, about the so-called right-wing Jews, which I hate that term, uh, right-wing. But a lot of these right-wing Jews are every bit as much as of an opponent, of, of, of a, basically essentially an enemy of free speech as any kind of progressive, you know, progressive liberal Jewish group. Why? Well, because instead of criticizing liberal, you know, degeneracy, if you criticize anything that Israel does, they want you censored. And then they only will invoke free speech when it's just something they agree with, like maybe drawing cartoons of the false prophet Muhammad or, or just anything essentially that would fall in line with, you know, a pro-Israel type of agenda. Now, I'm not saying I'm pro-Islam by any sense of the word. Islam is a satanic cult, plain and simple. But free speech is not just simply speech I agree with. That's what they, they uh, don't understand. But it says, uh, or this, yes, but on the other hand, this report itself isn't, this report isn't half smoking out the hard right pro apartheid organizations who are criticizing it, like the BOD, a hard right racist group, whom Keir Starmer, Starmer, whatever, 
has impl in, uh, inflexibly chosen uh, uh, to be the arb sorry to be the arbiter of what is and what isn't racist in the Labour Party. Well, again, I'm not saying I'm you know this guy is obviously pushing progressive ideology, but again, free speech, you know, freedom of expression. See, uh, the uh, essentially the UK is not Israel 2.0. They can actually speak their mind. Well. So, uh, supposedly, because there's all kinds of censorship over in the UK as well, but a bit of a side issue, says he really doesn't like Jews who make a fuss about anti-Semitism, such as Rachel Riley. Uh, he says, "quote No wonder Riley thinks she's doing uh, no one no wonder no one, sorry no idea what Riley thinks she is doing and why, but she is a proven liar and a fraud who harms those Jews who really are suffering from anti-Semitic abuse. She's utterly vile, and to pretend otherwise is to, is to uh, deny reality. Plus, if you know her, tell her to stop it pronto." Uh, those are the two ways of responding to online lies, sue or expose. I always prefer the latter, especially when the liar is supposedly respectable. And since it took me a matter of seconds to discover that Tom Gart, uh, Gartrins uh, is director of private client tax services for Smith and Williamson, so others would surely. And I doubted that so that so establishment a firm, sorry, that so establishment a firm would be happy to have their name associated with such anti-Semitic tropes as the board of deputies controlling the leader of the Labour Party. On May 28th, I wrote the, to the company's chairman, alerting him to his employee's behavior. I heard back the following morning from its PR confirming that my email has been read and would receive a response. The next day, he told me that I could see. The next day, he told me that I could see how seriously it was uh, being I was being taken from the fact that. Roar Mysterio has now made his tweets private. Yeah, because you just ruined this guy's life because he said some stuff he didn't like. Like I said, the Talmudic Jewish lobby, even a lot of the right-wing Talmudic Jews, are every bit, and in many ways more than, uh, more of a threat to free speech than any kind of Muslim or extremist left-wing group. Because these guys are often successful in getting speech shut down. Speech they don't like. Says, I have to tell you, I was skeptical about their response. Mr. Gar... Gautarian, Gautari whatever, hiding his tweets was hardly the response I had been after. Oh yeah, it's not good enough for you. You want more. You want him to suffer more, don't you? But my skepticism, skepticism was misplaced. The company CEO then called me to say that he would not give me any uh, information other than that the HR process was now underway, but he gave me word that it was being taken seriously. Weeks went by and I became convinced that they were hoping I would forget about it and go away. Yeah, it would probably be a good thing if you just go away, but of course, you just can't stand it when someone criticize, when someone expresses speech you don't like, don't you? You just had to get in there, ruin their life, don't you? How typical. They, they did that to the uh, early church in the book of Acts. They did, tried, tried doing that to Jesus Christ in uh, John 10, John 5, John 8. So a consistent record of these uh, Moloch worshippers. I was wrong. HR process needed time to ensure that all correct procedures were followed. The CEO rang again. He, he ha was... He had to be careful with his words, but he told me that Mr. Gautrim no longer worked for Smith and Williamson. I have no idea if he jumped or was pushed. I don't care. Uh, Smith Williamson behaved honorably. Smith and Williamson behaved honorably, and a man, and a man I believe to be a Jew hater, has suffered the consequences for his bigotry. That is what matters. No, uh, what matters is the fact that free speech ought to be supported. You know, see, oh, it's honorably. No, no, it's actually dishonorably to punish somebody for speech you don't like. Like I said, you know, I, I'm going to keep harping on this. They're ever, these guys are much more of a danger to free speech than any Muslim terrorist group out there because they will consistently pressure and pressure and pressure and ruin people's lives for saying some stuff they didn't like. I mean, talk about being thin-skinned on top of that. I mean, I mean, I could say a whole lot more on that, but of course the YouTube censors will come after me if I were to say what I really think about this whole thing. But this is the, the uh, typical type of behavior from the uh, cancel culture idol idolatry that is present in the Talmudic Jewish lobby. So more more videos coming on this in the future. Just wanted to get this one out there. More of kind of a rant, really. But these guys, they just cannot stand. They cannot stand it when speech is expressed they don't like. I'll just put it that way. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.